Some of you will know that I have an affinity for old junk that most people think is junk, but I find quite curiously interesting. This is a Bet and Solly, and this is my old junk of the day. This is not a modern Bet and Solly, this is a 1979 Bet and Solly. And as such, it's not like the modern ones. And I don't want to say anything derogatory towards modern Bet and Solly's because they are very reasonably priced. I mean, I expect this was reasonably priced back in 1979. Today, we're going to do two things. Firstly, we're going to look at it. And then secondly, we're going to do a timed improvement challenge. Why don't we have time to do a proper job of this? This idea is stupid. So first, we're going to shoot it. And then, Sasha has given me an hour and a half to make this gun better. This is like a version of Is It Cake? <laughs> Guys, let's have a look at her. Starting at the back, we have a Bakelite pad. I quite like this during the update process. I'm gonna have to lose that. That's heartbreaking. The stock is strong, but not particularly pretty. I mean, it's not the worst piece of wood in the world. I think we need to bear some time to look at the beauty of how this wood is shaped and up into here. That in itself is a lovely line. The skip checkering and a palm swell. A palm swell and skip checkering. I mean, the skip checkering is dated, but it's a 1979 gun. You know, she's pretty old. No offense to everyone here who is over 43. The wood has patina. It's certainly of an age, and someone has tried oiling it over that time and put too much oil on, which is pretty standard. It is a manual safety, lovely little safety catch, top lever with this locking bar system here, and the bar actually locks through these two bites that go into the top. You have two lumps on the bottom of the barrels that lock through the bottom plate, and they are actually acting as a draw piece to pull that back onto face. It has army betonsoli on the bottom and a sort of Rolled, etched engraving, rolled, I think, yeah, it's rolled engraving. It's about the only sign that it is a cheaper gun other than the fact that it is what it is. It says Bet and Solly on it. The forend work, and again, the woodwork on this is really beautifully done. The forend work and the way this sort of semi-magnum forend actually rolls into itself. I think that's lovely. So the barrels are a really nice quality. The way the ribs have been laid, the way they've been finished is really good. You can see the grip marks in the bluing. And that's a bit of an indication of lower quality that I didn't spend the time to file these barrels up and strike them off properly. But that's fine. That could have happened after the fact. You never know, but I doubt it. I like the fact the rib is the tram line thick rib, little beads out at the end. The sight plane on this is really nice. She has got some choke. Feels like a quarter and quarter. We'll have a look. We'll see how it breaks targets. So in order to decide where to start on this, the answer is to go and shoot it pre-use. I think most of my time is probably going to be dedicated to gun fit because if you're given an hour and a half to improve the way a gun shoots for you, having it fit slightly better is intelligent. But we'll only know that after we've gone and played. Guys, to EJ Churchill. All right, ready for another game of does it work? Bottom barrel does. I mean, the stock spec is very 80s. You kind of have to dismount it to move it where you need it because the stock is an odd shape, but the action and the, the fore end, like from here on up, it's lovely. One of the fun things about being a father is Father's Day. And because Shotcam love fathers, they have a Father's Day sale. You've seen the footage from these cameras on a lot of our videos. They have a 30 day money back guarantee if you're not satisfied, they've got two years warranty, they've got free delivery, and if you get one on the 13th and the 14th, they come with a free hat. That's one of these that says shock hammer. It comes in a lovely case with all the tools to transfer the data to your computer and to fit it to a 12 gauge barrel. They do cyber side mounts, sub gauge mounts, everything you could ever want. And like I said, there's a sale. They support the channel, they support the videos we make and that you love. And to be honest, it's a great product that's just really handy and quite fun to have. Guys, the link's up there, check them out. And now on with the most ridiculous film we've ever made. And I'm gonna get back to being a dad. I quite like this. 
I mean, as I said, the action and barrels are exceptionally strong. The construction, even the metal quality, the mad little play with a bit of a file earlier, it, it, it doesn't mark easy, you know, they're not made from butter. The fixed chokes are, I mean, clearly enough choke to break some clays, but I think Italian's best kept secret is actually that Bettentoni used to build guns that could have, could have in another world, developed into something that was truly world class. An extension and an adjustable comb, and I mean, look at the way that knot's filled. Ooh, it is peachy. But the trigger brakes, oh, everything about this gun is good. Let's shoot a few more clays and then back to the studio. Matt, this could be the best cheap gun I've shot in a while. I'm not sure where I'm looking, but with a bit of attention paid, it does. And that's good enough sometimes. You know, people really write off guns like this. It's, it's not nice, don't get me wrong. Like, But it's plenty nice enough. Uh, the only reason it's not nice is because the stock is an, a spec that isn't suitable for the modern sporting style. But not being funny, with some black tape and a bit of cardboard, you could get this where it needed to be. And this is the sort of thing you can pick up because nobody values it because it's just an old better solly, isn't it? But the action is solid as a rock. You can just look at the hallmarks of quality that are on there, the way the ribs are struck on. Everything about this is built to a good standard. I mean, they've skimped on some areas where, where, which didn't matter so much, but don't care about those. As long as the things that are important are good, meaning the action of barrels, everything else is kind of superfluous or, or can be modified or worked around. Oh, well, there you go. Once upon a time, Bet and Solly did make guns that were on their way to being world class. And I don't mean that in a derogatory way. Now their guns are just pretty generic, pretty average things. And some of the things that you can see they're doing to them with paint and enamel and all sorts of stuff that you can see over on another English YouTube channel that has actually reviewed them, they're not bad. But this was like the stepping stone to greatness. This is an original fresh fish counter of guns sort of gun. This is, this is the other fresh fish counter of guns from back in the day when perhaps people cared about quality. And it's interesting that perhaps some of the things that are on this now that people look for nowadays, they look for something completely different. And actually specification is sought for after quality. And on the continent, I have a, a, a fair few continental friends. They seem to still look at the action of barrels. They'll go and buy a gun for its action of barrels and restock it. I know that's of absolutely no consequences because we live in England and we're our own market and the most sophisticated shotgun using market in the world, potentially, or varied. This is the sort of gun that makes me wish I was a secret millionaire. She'd go, yeah, I'll just throw a grand at restocking that. Doesn't matter. But I won't. It'll go where it belongs. Alongside all the other guns I'll never use. An hour and a half is not a lot of time. So in reality, we don't have time to do anything too major. But that's not gonna stop us trying. You have to, I suppose, in this challenge, accept that you can either do one thing to a decent standard or lots of things to a average standard. What are we gonna do? Well, I don't think there's anything particularly bad about the lockup. It's good, it's strong, it's a bit stiff, but actually going into that is probably gonna take an hour and a half in itself. The gun fires, the gun works, the gun operates. What I think we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of length, a little bit of length to the grip cap there. And again, that could look rough, we shall see. The length we'll do with a pad, nothing too obscene, we're not gonna get it to the proper length in the time allowance we have. What I'd like to do, although an hour and a half isn't really long enough to do it, is cast it. The gun is brutally straight. Again, like with so many things, it's designed, even this parcel is designed to be held up here and be shot in a very old fashioned way. We don't shoot like that anymore. So yeah, deepen the grip, lengthen the gun, perhaps cast it, see what we can do about comb height. But I'm thinking increase length, increase grip size, see where we're at. What would be lovely is if we can find the time just to give this stock a little bit of TLC. I'm feeling that if we don't stress too much about the finish and just take some of that old finish off just to give it a slightly more even coating, that would be a good use of time. Alternatively, this is gonna be the biggest waste of an hour and a half of my life. Guys, to the workshop. Sash, am I allowed in my time allowance to get some things ready or not? No. Oh, cool. I'm making it mad, bro. Because uh, the workshop is a, I've just improved the value. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, where to start? Uh, I suppose add length makes sense. So pull off the beautiful pad. This is museum quality, this piece. Museum quality. Oh wow, this is gonna be a one of them. Got that top lever, and sort of retightening in the past, which I mean, it's blatant, it's a 1979 gun that feels that tight. It's just always interesting to see how people go about it. Uh, because we're on a time constraint, I have opted for a second hand pad and let's see if we can find one that's somewhere handy. This isn't what we'd call a, a nice pad. I say the, these open cell pads are okay, but when you get to a certain length, they are perhaps a little bit too soft, maybe. I like the Isis ones, they're a lot harder. Look at that, ready? We could have saved ourselves a significant amount of time there, big boy. Use the ancient measuring tool that doesn't work for the arm. Yeah, it's gonna be okay. That'll, that'll do, I think they say in the biz. Look at the size of those holes though. It always annoys me when people use these sort of oversized screws. It does make my life significantly harder down the line. Don't know why those people in 1979 didn't know that YouTube was gonna be a thing that people would wanna do. Stupid stuff to guns. It's 12 o'clock when we started, yeah? We're agreeing on that? Yeah. Why don't we have time to do a proper job of this? Sorry. You're fondling me. Well, you're in the way of my random box of screws. Unattractive views of Jonathan's chin. <laughs> this idea is stupid. You've got about 10 minutes left. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Put on the hillbilly Dave. Wow, this is, this is as hillbilly as it comes. Hillbilly lathe. We don't really have hillbillies in England, from my American viewers. Hey, look at that bad boy. We're basically there. Perfect fitment, perfect fitment. the worst pad fit I've ever seen. It's not the best either. Let's go tidy it up. What's the time? Clock is ticking, I can tell you that. We've used 11 minutes. So top secret news, this gun didn't have a firing pin before we started and I did that well before time. So there's no time discounts for that because if it didn't work, that would be an unfair project. However, we don't usually do this when you're fitting a pad, or you shouldn't usually do this when you're fitting a pad, run it into the wood unless you want a perfect fit, but obviously you need to refinish the wood to match. We've got an hour and a half to refinish this wood. It's gonna be quite some challenge. However, for now, this looks better, you know, and there's certain things we can do to negate the unfortunate stuff that's gonna happen over this next few minutes. Low, oh, I don't have time for a comb razor. I've got time to chop a piece of wood into the top, but it will look... As long as it shoots well, mate. No, no, it also needs to look to a certain standard, doesn't it? What, what's the game? Is it to improve shootability or to improve looks? I feel like at the start of this process, you said it's either going to look better or it's going to shoot better. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, we kind of have gone down the shoot better route, but it, it kind of hurts me to make it look ugly. Realistically, I could just stick a comb razor on there and that would be fine. Bang. It does need a little bit on the bottom. We're gonna add a grip cap now. That's whatever we're gonna do next, that will be it. Doesn't need to be big, doesn't need to be flash, just needs to exist. So let's start by flattening off what we've got. We should hollow this out a little bit in the middle just to give ourselves something for the epoxy to glue to, although I don't even know if we've got time to use epoxy. This is a stupid challenge idea. Can I quit? This wood is not the nicest quality of wood. Because it would take time to go down and get a piece of paper. I'm just gonna cut this out instead. That grip shape I really do love. Like, there's a lot of things in guns that are really practical, really good for making you better and hit more target. It's not two lists, isn't it? It's almost like we said when we started. Shoot better and look better. Those two things often go against each other. Certain things that are more practical sometimes actually just aren't as cool. Piece of metal, material, piece of material, Jatoba. Oh, that looks miserable, doesn't it? We'll use that. Walnut, bit of walnut. Oak, MDF. Metal would be nice. Something quick, whatever it is. Old box of stuff. That was a worthwhile five minutes of my life. Start from the Blackwood. 
Olive. Olive. Oof. A coat, I'm not really a big fan of. Air rifle cylinder, we can make it out of air rifle cylinder. Oh, mate. Imagine keeping the coronet of an antler as the bottom of your grip. I think that would be quite, quite an ugly project that would also look quite cool at the same time. What's this? The ebony fits. Ebony it is, young sir. Mm, it's not quite enough. It's got to be something, anything really. You. You! I mean, this belt is dead. Ludicrous might have had hose in different area codes. Imagine if an English person said that song, because obviously their area codes are different to ours, aren't they? Imagine if it was instead like, I've got hose in different postcodes, but they're like SP4, SO30, NT1, I don't know, I don't know any postcodes, but it just doesn't really work quite so well. When you put it into context, it sounds way less cool. And I hope that Americans listen to Ludacris and go, sounds like what I just sung, but to them, it's embarrassing. Yeah, we're on 42 minutes so far, mate. Super glue is quite possibly the worst substance in the world for anything. It doesn't really penetrate that hard. It's not a good glue. To be a good glue, you need to penetrate hard. What you can do is um, give the glue something to love. In this instance, it melts the plastic that they use to make these pads and it, it basically will I just need it to stick for now in reality. No, but definitely put too much, way too much on there. I'm not very good at this whole pressure thing. There you go. Thank you. How are you getting on? The grip cap was a bad idea. Should have just glued it on or stuck something on. We've got 22 minutes. It hurts me to leave it in this state, but you know, it's like a half a day to a day's job to fit one of these nicely, not drop the ball of my hand in just a little bit there. Chuck some 400 grit, 400 grit, maybe 240 over the stock, and then go for the rest. All right. Oh, big boy, how are we doing? Well, right, I can do a lot of things in 12 minutes. We're not that close. This is like a version of visit cake. <laughs> You've done that for the full 15 minutes. <laughs> All right, aesthetic, aesthetics, aesthetics, aesthetics. Oh my God. The clock is seriously against you, my friend. Yeah, I know. Bad vibes only. 240 grit stock finish. I mean, still better than ATA comes out the box. What slam. We don't even have time to wet the wet and dry because we don't have time to stock the dry to add stock stain afterwards. You know what I've done? I've taken a really nice gun. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I hope I've inspired you to do the same. <laughs> Don't even have time to take the action off the barrels. I now know what it's like to be on one of those reality shows that, well, I'm watching the cooking ones where they, you know, they, is it cake and the chocolate masterpieces and all that kind of thing. And you're always like, it's edited to make it look like that the last five minutes is a huge rush. How could they not budget time intelligently? Because they're morons. You've got it, you've got it. I want to do the four end as well. All right, we don't even have time to dye it at this point. We have... Mate, you've got it. I've got six minutes. Six minutes is plenty. Is it to dye a stock? Is it? Mate, I think all my oils are upstairs. I don't actually have time to get them. What have we got? Gone off stock sealer. Well, my special sauce is actually too much time away. I think it's done. Like this is actually done. I might have just wasted 30 seconds. Next. Let's get rid of that. So at least we've got something. Here we go. Let's go. CCL gunstock conditioning oil, which is quite good stuff actually for an out of the box product. You will have heard me say, don't put too much of this on. Well, that's not the rules today, baby. Them's not the rules today. All of my life boils down to this moment. Is that us? No, no, till the alarm ends. The alarm's gonna go on forever. Uh, you call me with coffee, this is overtime. Injury time for coffee. Well done, mate. I hurt emotionally, physically. I haven't rubbed that hard for that long since I was 17. <laughs>
Welcome to Northampton Shooting Club. Today, I am going to be shooting this monstrosity. This is the Benton Solly. The more I look at it now, the more I hate what I did. Well, you have to learn sometimes that you doesn't attach to walnut. Never done it before. Glad that I've never done it before. And to be fair, I will never do it again. The wood, however, coming back to it, looks better. The filler still looks like filler. And I'll tell a lie, I put one extra coat of oil on it literally before we came because if you put one coat of oil on wood it just looks terrible and i couldn't be associated with that uh slight problem i think the other firing pin's broken <laughs> just pushed it back in with the top rib because the beauty of cheap guns is it doesn't matter as long as we get through this stand sash case in point and i have to replace the other firing pin double the value of the gun but um hold on to the best ones are you ready well, that worked. It's definitely better. It's definitely better. Fuel's a lot more natural being a little longer. The cast is still leaves a bit to be desired as does the comb height, but you know, maybe that'll be the next hour and a half challenge we do to this gun. Cast and comb height in an hour. Cutting it off and fitting a piece of wood in the jig whilst it's being cast. Tell you what, this is a pair buttoning for yourself is quite tough. Sash, would you do the honours? I mean, the videography will take a step down here, guys, just so you're aware. Uh, it's A, the port B. A, then B. That's oh, his pair next oh. to it. Ah. Pull. You're, not, you're a bit of a harsh, harsh buttoner, really, aren't you, Sash? Yeah. You just kind of pressed it. You've just got to be better. All right, well, that's my five pairs done. For a gun that represents an hour and a half of my life, and what you could pick up at auction for like sub 100 pounds. I'll take nine out of 10. The only reason I missed that rabbit was me trying to be cocky and shoot it with a bit of a more speedy gun as opposed to taking it later with a bigger gap, which is what I did the other four times. Because repetition, 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 <laughs> rep rep repetition is uh, the key, apparently, uh, to success with these things. So bear that in mind when you buy your 100 pound gun and do your own back from the brink, from the brink to the bin. That's what we should call the series. <laughs> okay, stand two, apparently there's an overhead and a rabbit. My guess that the kill zone is there with the rabbit. We shall have a look at the targets in just a second. It's better. It's way smoother to shoot. Like, I'm not, last time, to be honest, my hand felt like it had been taken all of that recoil. Where it's a bit short, so I'm obviously not getting up on it and it's had a tiny grip, my hand, hurt it feel like someone had put it under a car for a day I, it, it hurt but now after 10 shots so this is definite fact oh uh, we're a bit better all right see what we can do five pair hey bird Where it's a little low in the comb, I'm starting to feel just that little bit of pressure in my bottom jaw there, where my mount point's a little low. It should be up here. I, I'm not, it's not recoil at all, it's not hurting, but I can feel it, if that makes any sense. And uh, I just clean that stand. 19 out of 20 with a sub 100 quick gum. That from five yards looks nice. I mean, I think it looks lovely up close. I'm gonna shoot another stand with it. It is a very pretty ground. They've got the big buns, you've got trees, like this is a nice ground. I just didn't even know it existed until the other day when I was Googling shooting grounds near Northampton because we're working up the road tomorrow. Very nice. Lots of trap DTLs, a pool shoot with some tasty targets. I might actually go and have a pop at that later. And they're open from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. That is so logical to me. Like as someone who works through the days that you go, I'm gonna skip there, bug off an hour early and go shoot. Whereas to be honest, down our way, everybody closes at five. Except, except, Barbary is open late on Wednesdays in the summer. There you go, there is an exception. All right, last stand with this beast because, well, you don't need to see me break any more targets. Let's be honest, we are putting literally the finest fiber wad on God's green earth into this gun, and that helps. I think a lot of people like to buy good and expensive gear and then try and hunt around for the cheapest crap. The confidence these give you, the extra braking power at that little extra range, and more importantly, the confidence. You say it twice, it's twice as important turns even this old lump into a good old killing stick. Drop 
caught one A bird there. Pressed the button and then mounted the gun. I waited just a fraction too long and it started to curl. So I thought I'd take you on the way down and uh, just misread it. Shot up the right hand side and give, give it enough. 28 out of 30 though with a sub 100 quid a month. You just have to open your eyes occasionally. And this isn't me saying every cheap gun is good, but when you know what you're looking for and you get really lucky and you don't mind doing a bit of fixy uppy stuff, and you know, mild modification. I don't think this looks terrible. It doesn't look particularly good, but it doesn't look terrible. But if I spent another six, seven hours on this, this would start to look all right, I think. And, and failing that, just get a Cerakoted paint. And then nobody cares what it looks like because everyone understands it's ghastly. How do you conclude a film like this? Other than, I hope you enjoyed yourself. I certainly did. I am going to put this gun away now. I should shoot the whole round of it, but you know, that would make this film way too long and nobody really cares. I shot 28 out of 30 with it. That's enough to say that you can break targets with this. The two that I missed were just through silly gun movements and perhaps a, a lack of rhythm between me pressing the button and, and going there. They don't have a um, solo delay system here, which is fine because I should have friends or a, uh, a man who holds a camera and can press buttons. A multitasker, Sasha, would be a pleasant thing. So there you go. I'm sure we will see this gun again. I have developed a real soft spot for it. I developed a soft spot the moment I saw it. I have now developed more of an affinity to it. It needs a bit more love. And maybe we'll see that time invested in the future, but for now, take care guys, it's been brilliant. We'll see you next time.